What's up everyone? <laughs> Hope you all are having an excellent Sunday. Primarily, please ignore my beard. It has grown too long and I'm going to chop it off in a couple of days and please stay tuned because I'm going to tell you a very interesting story today. And this story is not really a story because it's a real life experience and it happened to me uh, back in December 2019, a few days, just a few days before Christmas. I was back from college in Trivandrum and I was in Kolkata at that point of time and I was roaming around the city with my sister. I mean, especially in Park Street. Park Street is basically the hub, I mean, of celebration of Christmas in Kolkata. So I was just trying to absorb the vibe and feel, I mean, before, you know, I mean, the pre-festival vibes, I was just trying to absorb the pre-festival festival vibes and I was just roaming around the city with my sister. So we were in Park Street and uh, near near Park Street, I mean in very close proximity to Park Street there is a church called St. Paul's Cathedral and the church has, you know, it's it's one of the best churches in Kolkata, I mean in terms of architecture and sculpture. So, and it's also one of the most grand churches in Kolkata. So, and it's like literally a 15 minute bus ride or a 10 minute car ride from my house, but I have never been, I, I mean, I had never been there until then. So I decided that I, I'm just gonna pay a visit. So, because I'm, I'm so close and usually, even when I'm passing by, I usually don't stop at that place. I mean, at the, near the same St. Paul's Cathedral, but at that point of time I was there. So I decided, that, okay, let's just give a visit. So I went there uh, with my sister and we visited the church. The church was, as, as usual, it was amazing. They had the afternoon prayers and after that we were sitting in the church for like 15, 20 minutes in absolute silence. And it was just, a, I mean, a blissful, holy experience. And, I, and I'm gonna maybe talk about that sometime later. So after that, we were going out of the church, I mean, out of the perimeter of the church, and then suddenly I, look, I turn to the right and I see that inside the perimeter of the church, there is a small, you know, uh, one-story building, and it's it, and from the distance, it looks like some kind of a shop. So, yeah, so I tell my sister that let's just go and explore and see what the shop has, maybe. I mean, we can just collect maybe a few souvenirs. I have the habit of collecting postcards. I have uh, uh, postcards from different countries and different cities. I mean, not many, but quite a few. But uh, so I have the habit of collecting postcards and I also have the habit of collecting coins and newspapers and other stuff but that's uh, beyond the issue at this at this point of time so we go into the shop and I see, and we see that it's you know it's a flea shop and they usually I mean they usually sell second hand items and they usually collect the money and they use it for some uh, church you know trust or uh, charity and they usually usually help it uh, for uh, the education of underprivileged children or so i remember so we go we go inside the flea shop and we see that there are a lot of handicraft items and a lot of different cute things a lot of cute dolls and uh, postcards and a lot of handwritten notes and stuff written here and there and 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 there are a lot of souvenirs which they're selling at a very you know very very modest price at a very cheap price and they are just trying to raise money from that so that they can help educate more more children help feed more children which is indeed a noble noble work so I, I mean, we just go around, and there's one lady sit, sitting at the counter. So, I I I, I, I was going, I was just asking her a couple of questions. Sorry for the fumble. So yeah, I was I was asking her a couple of questions, and we, we were just chatting. And then suddenly, I see that at one corner inside the room, there is a, you know a, a cardboard box uh, which is like very dusty, and I see uh, a couple of old books and old book covers peeping out of the cardboard box and I just asked her that what's that for what's the old book uh, for and she says that it's I mean they are literally nothing they I mean some people just came and they donated old books and they are just dumped here and uh, so I asked her that may I just have a look and, and if I want to buy some of these uh, I mean am I can I can I buy a few of these if I want to so she told me that of, of course uh, go ahead welcome I mean, you're welcome people do not usually go for the books they usually go for the souvenirs or handmade postcards and stuff and uh, drawings by the underprivileged children and stuff so I go there and I picked up two books and my sister picked up one we still have the bill and the bill was uh, 60 rupees for three books we have, I still have the bill. We we have we paid 60 rupees for three books. One book is with my sister, and so I cannot show it to you now. The second book is this one, Gravitation and Cosmology, and this book literally is brand new. It looks literally brand new. Just look at the pages. I mean, I don't know if you are able to see it in the camera, but it literally looks 
brand new. And it's an excellent book. It's written by Steven Weinberg, Gravitation and Cosmology, Principles and Application of the General Theory of Relativity. And it's an excellent book for, I mean, uh, physics students and especially for people who are interested in physics. Uh, so, I mean, I love this book. I, I mean, I always, I, I mean, I kind of keep on using this book uh, as a reference whenever I'm studying something related to gravitation, cosmolo cosmology, or uh, general relativity. And then the and then comes the final and third thing. I mean, my sister brought a, a book which is like, a, it's a normally available book in the market, but uh, I mean, she got it at a very low price and she didn't have it, so she decided to buy that one. And we also got a few postcards and I, I don't have them right now, I guess. Okay, and the third thing I got is this. I mean, this is literally, uh, I mean, a timeless piece. This this book looks really old. It's uh, Aid to Tropical Hygiene by R.J. Blackham, second edition. And this book, I mean, see, even, even, even the main cover, it's coming off. The main cover is coming off. And this book was uh, printed in 1922. And uh, this book was printed in London by Bollier, Tyndall and Cox uh, and they also have the address 8 Henrietta Street, Covent Garden, 1922 and this book was edited by, I mean this book was not edited by, this book has a preface uh, by Lieutenant General Sir John Goodwin who used to be the Director General of the Army Medical Services at that point of time so yeah I mean this book, I got this book for 20 rupees can you believe it like it's uh, almost a 100 year 100 years old book and it's printed in london it has a handwritten note from 1927 and i'm going to put that on the screen right now so it has a handwritten note from 1927 and uh, yeah i mean the note was written in edinburgh and <laughs> so i mean like I mean, it's it's literally emotionally overwhelming. I mean, so many people, so many people touched the book. The book maybe has, I mean, uh, I mean, it has been in the hands of so many people, so many army people of the royal of the royal medical services of the royal army. And uh, this book, yeah, it has a note. I'm I'm gonna try to read read that out to you, but the handwriting is not so clear. To Mr. Christensen, I'm not quite sure about the name hoping that this little book will be of some value and help him to maintain his splendid physical condition. I cannot read who signed this but that guy has an MB and it also was signed on 4th October 1927 in Edinburgh. So yeah, I mean, this is literally, I mean, this is literally giving me goosebumps. I mean, I mean, it's, it's been over one and a half years uh, I, since I have this book and it still literally give, gives me goosebumps. So, I mean, I mean, even, even the people in the flea shop, I mean, they were, they were not quite interested in, in, the, in the heaps of the book, it seemed. I mean, I didn't get the time to check through all the books and... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just emotionally over overwhelming. Like so many people touched this book, so many countries, so much history. One almost 100 years to this book, and uh, I mean, this book has like uh, 10, 12 chapters, and yeah, it has 12 chapters, and it talks in details about the climate of the tropics, the air and ventilation, the water and water supply in the tropics, the food and feeding, clothing in the tropics, sites, soils and houses, the disposal of refuse in the tropics, disposal of the dead, insects, arachnids and rats, animal parasites, prevention of malaria and disinfectants and disinfection of uh, in the tropics. And it also has an epidemiological table of diseases and it also has an appendix which consists of material, meteor, meteorology, meteorology and the distinctive characters between three flies found in houses. Okay, wow, so I mean in terms of 1922, this book is, I mean, it has and it's it's the second edition of the book. The first edition of the book was probably I I I I'm just guessing it was written in 1920 or 1921, and it was written especially after the First World War because in the First World War uh, First World War I mean a lot of you know Europeans and Americans not Americans but a lot of Europeans died in the tropical countries fighting for supremacy, <laughs> and uh, so yeah prob this book was like uh, a bible for the people probably I I guess who came. I mean, this book or the I mean, these kind of books were probably Bibles to the um, probably a Bible to the people to the army men who came over to the tropical countries and they had to stay here and they had to survive and they had to fight 
and it's uh, just literally an incredible experience. I got this book, it's, it's a 100 year old book and I got this for 20 rupees. I mean, just imagine this is a bargain. I mean, like if I just, I, I'm thinking that if I just maybe put this up on an auction, how much is this gonna cost? I'm not gonna put, put this up on auction ever because this is like a very, cl I'm very close thing to my heart and I'm never gonna sell this book. And uh, yeah, this, this book is just literally, literally amazing. And uh, I mean, not just because of the information it has in it, it also has a few hand, I mean, handwritten notes in pencil. It's here, I, I guess you can see it, and I cannot read it to you because it's not quite clear. It also has a few pen and pencil underlines. And yeah, I mean, it, it's still giving me goosebumps. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the same book that a person, I mean, a person was sitting in Edinburgh and writing a note and another person printed this book and then it was shipped from probably London to, from London to Edinburgh and then I don't know to how many tropical countries and then it finally ended up and landed in Kolkata inside a flea shop inside a dusty cardboard box and the people were not even interested and the books were selling out for like 20 rupees a piece so it's 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 an I mean I mean in Bengali there is uh, a proverb which says which means that everywhere you see ash just blow it and you might find something you know extremely valuable so I mean it's just literally emotionally overwhelming and it's literally I mean I'm fumbling and uh, I really don't have any more words to say it's I, I, I feel so, you know, lucky. I mean, I feel so lucky. Maybe, maybe I don't have, uh, the, I mean, maybe I'm not the richest person in the world, but definitely this makes me one of the most happiest persons in the world because I love books and I have an antique piece. And, that, and, and uh, I had an excellent bargain, I mean, just for 20 rupees. Can you even imagine? So if you have any further stories like this, I mean, just drop it in the comment section below. I would love to read through them. And uh, yeah, I, I also have, you know, if, if you know, if you have been following me on, Inst on Instagram, you know that, I mean, I post stories from Kolkata. I mean, about the culture of Kolkata, about the food of Kolkata, for, about different heritage buildings of Kolkata. And I post story, Instagram stories. So if you are interested to see them, they are like small 15 minute, uh, you know, videos. I post them on Insta Instagram stories. So if you're interested, inter to see them I mean I'm gonna start posting a, a new series of Kolkata stories that I recorded before the second wave of COVID set in and I'm gonna post them now and over over the next week so if you're interested just stay tuned to my Instagram uh, I mean, I'll put the account link in the description below if you're interested in music you can check out I mean if you're, uh, if you're interested in Indian music especially you can check out uh, to the I mean through the all the other videos that I've posted I've posted a few music musical videos on YouTube as well as on my Facebook page as well as on my Instagram so feel free to go and join me there and if you have anything to say just drop a comment below or just DM me on Instagram or on Facebook and I'll be more than happy to reply and uh, yeah take care I mean the second wave has I mean kind of subsided not exactly subsided but people are getting vaccinated the second wave has subsided and things are opening up the lockdown is in different states are getting lifted and it's time to get back to work so yeah stay tuned take your I mean take care of your health take care of your family get vaccinated if you haven't been got vaccinated i mean get vaccinated as soon as possible and take love and all the good wishes in today's father's day so happy father's day to all the brave fathers all the great fathers who are out there and who are working and struggling for the family who are enduring all the hardships of the external world and they are you know just fighting it out just broiling it out and they are bringing home peace happiness for their family for their children so yeah, happy Father's Day, stay home, stay safe, get vaccinated. And of course, if you did like this video and if you want more of these kind of videos, if you want more of the more of the vlogs that I post, if you want more of the music videos that I post, stay tuned to my channel, like the video, subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you have never had these kind of experiences, I mean, please feel free to try, you know, to try new things. Never be afraid to try new things. So. You know, that's all I had to say and yeah, that's it for today and I'll see you hopefully next week and next week, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week and next week is going to be a special video. Doodles.